Okay, folks, good morning and welcome to Stock Charts Today. This is Bob Desmond, and I want to begin first off with our member stock chart request. This is where we review the health of the overall markets, and then we're going to segue into the pre-market activity. First stock up is going to be DPZ, Domino's Pizza. Here's what I had to say last about DPZ back on March the 31st. It is posted here on the blog. Simply go to the blog, type in DPZ, and you'll be taken to the videos where I discussed DPZ, and here's what I had to say on March the 31st. The next short up, Domino's Pizza. I've been watching the stock for weeks. Members are probably getting sick of me talking about it, but we haven't been able to buy it yet, especially in this market environment. But given that market environment, and when you weigh how D Domino's Pizza has been behaving relative to the S&P 500, it's really doing well, it, although it hasn't broken out yet. It's holding up very well. Now, if and when this market does rally, you should expect to see new leadership. So Domino's is holding a tight trading range in a very rough market, a very volatile market. Volume was light last week, but you expect that when you're in a trading range. We did not break out, obviously, and we did close down off the lows of the week. So we're going to talk more about this tomorrow on the week ahead commentary. I, I like the fact RSI is still rising, Stokes is still rising. So again, we're going to talk more on Sunday with regards to when we want to get involved with Domino's Pizza. Okay, now fast forward to present day, and you could see that we have since March the 31st broken out. We've pulled back, retested the breakout point. We've been consolidating for a few weeks now. I think that we are bull flagging out here. Let's throw some resistance and support levels all right so here you have it this is a continuation breakout pattern no new weekly high though but i think that we're going to get it fairly soon the path of least resistance for dpz is up daily chart daily basis we have a double bottom setup and rising rsi which is above 50. now if there's a caveat here what has me concerned is the fact that stokes are down below the 50 level but they are hooking up so we'll give it a little bit of latitude Here's our bull flag formation on a daily basis. A very strong continuation breakout pattern. So we are very bullish on Domino's Pizza. Now the next chart that's up is Alibaba. And here's what I had to say about Alibaba. If you want to go back and check it out, stock chart of the day, Alibaba, B-A-B-A, -B -A, if you want to search YouTube. And here's what I had to say about Alibaba back then weeks we pulled back we did not touch the lower band of this rising up trend channel which is bullish we held support so we have a support level below let's call it 101.60 and this week we have rallied up and through this upper band of resistance which is bullish stuff however here's the caveat it's monday so we have four trading days left to go we want to make sure that these shares close above this upper band of resistance if they do really good stuff going on here now we're going to get an indicator of whether or not these shares are going to be successful using the daily and two hour chart i'm going to go over the daily chart with visitors i'm going to go over the two hour chart with members so members stay tuned so so the weekly chart, we are breaking out. All the indicators are confirming the breakout higher. I see zero negative divergences. Daily chart. All right, so now on a daily basis, let's update this chart. Be right back. Okay, daily chart. We took out our crayons. We drew some trend lines, and they really tell a story. We'll begin with price. We broke out of this inverted head and shoulders setup left shoulder head right shoulder we broke out above the neckline the 45 degree neckline on march the 13th we consolidated pulled back retested the breakout point what does that mean what the markets did here because traders are ocd this is what i always teach members traders are ocd what they need to see is a breakout and then a pullback and a retest to make sure that what was resistance is now support. Then we rallied, flashed a bullish key reversal on the 16th. Today, we broke out above 
this resistance level. We have RSI, which confirmed the breakout on price, and then it confirmed the retest of the breakout point. It broke out as well. So we have RSI validating the breakout on price. We also have volume. If you're a member of mine for any more than 20 minutes, you know that I watch volume. We have volume. That's a sign of institutional accumulation. We have stochastics breaking out. As I just mentioned with price and RSI, we had a breakout, then we had a pullback and a retest, and now we're breaking out and putting in higher highs and higher lows. So I mentioned earlier that while I'm bullish on Alibaba, I have my concerns about the stock. And before I leave this chart, the only, the only thing that bothers me about the chart here, and it's no reason to go selling the shares, it's just that we're leaning into the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. It shouldn't be there. We'll probably pause, consolidate, and then continue higher. Now, I produced that video back here in May of... 2017 and you can see that since that point we have rallied nearly 200 percent since that point in time so for those out there that want to tell you that technical analysis does not work show them this chart show them my video it does work where do we stand now with regard to baba well, on a weekly basis we're seeing some exhaustion gaps here as noted here the week of May the 7th here, the week of May the 14th, thus far this week, we have an inside week, no new high, no new low. Do I believe that the rally is over? No, I, I don't think that it's necessarily over. I think it's under pressure right now, daily chart. Now, on a daily basis, the story changes some. What appears to be pressure on a weekly chart, on a daily chart, is validated to be a bottoming formation then a rally, and then for the past two weeks, we have been consolidating within a tight trading range. So with the week still being young and the news flow out of Washington and Beijing being positive with regard to trade talks, the probability of a continuation move higher for Alibaba is very strong. Back to the weekly chart. So as it stands right now, despite the fact that we've seen pressure in 2018 on the shares and a rebound, the path of least resistance remains higher for these shares. And in fact, we broke out within a trading channel. So not a significant breakout, but a breakout nonetheless, the week of May the 7th. So again, a bit of consolidation here. We're looking for a rip higher on Alibaba very soon. Over the weekend, I talked about AMX, America Mobile, as being a watch stock. Why do we like it? We like it because we have RSI 16.79. We have a double bottom setup forming on our Stokes. I warned that in all probability, we would not hold this support level. While it showed a little bit of strength last Friday, being able to uh, rebound off of the lows of the day and close back above support last seen back in November, I did not like the setup and that in all probability, we would head down to a lower price point. And in fact, yesterday we did break down further. We have a price point in mind. Members, we discussed it over the weekend on the week ahead commentary. And we will execute at that price point should, as I expect, buyers step in and help support the share. So AMX still looking weak, but becoming more and more attractive by the day. Now, I know that many of you out there may be saying, you know, this guy likes to catch falling knives. Not at all. I just realized that the stock market is all about probabilities. And what are the probabilities of this downtrend continuing with RSI down below 17 without having, at some point in time, at a significant support level, getting a counter trend rally? Do I believe that the stock is going to rebound and go back to all-time highs anytime soon? No, not at all. This is a play that we are going to get a dead cat bounce. And it's also a play that this trade, this trend, 
is unsustainable. So members, more to come on AMX. Okay, let's segue now into the pre-market activity this morning. And over the weekend and last week, I was discussing with members that I believed that the rally in the dollar was help being fueled by not just shorts, but also the news flow stemming from the trade talks. And what gave me that clue was right back here when we peaked out a bit on the 9th of May. And then we pulled back. And during that time, there was some news out of the trade negotiations that there was a concession made by the Chinese, which was then later denied by the Chinese. And then we got this subsequent rally. So it was at that time where the news flow tipped us off about the influence of the trade talks having on the U.S. dollar. And I shared that with members. Fast forward to the weekend where we had a breakthrough in the trade talks. Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, came out, said that the trade war is on hold. We got some concessions overnight out of China with regard to auto imports. And you can see that the dollar has been weak for the past couple of days. We do have a new daily low this morning. Now, the dollar is not broken, but it's very close to breaking down significantly. Yesterday, I mentioned to members on Market Wrap, it's posted in the members area, that we saw a bullish key reversal after we saw several days of a hollow filled candlesticks, meaning there was a lack of conviction by dollar buyers to get aggressively long. And in fact, they were booking profits by day's end. Because what they were worried about is going to bed and then waking up and seeing the news flow go against them. And that's exactly what happened yesterday and into today. So the dollar is weak. Let's take a look at gold. Gold finally caught a bid. It is now breaking out above resistance. We are still down below the ever critical psychological support level of 1300. Now yesterday morning on stock charts today, I mentioned that we were very close and came really close to touching the lower band of support for gold. Were it to break, you would have seen a lot of selling on gold, but it held, it bounced back. Now we're putting in some higher lows. We have yet to get our higher highs. So we're seeing some stabilization, and the market sent us a clue on these four-hour charts back here on the 16th of May, when we broke out of this downtrend on RSI, note the double bottom setup. I didn't just draw these lines. These, were, these have been there. We broke out, and we've been stair-stepping higher for the past several days, and now we have a breakout. So this is the market sending a signal that the momentum was beginning to change for gold. Getting to oil. Oil is up this morning. We're pulling back off the highs of the session. Now, oil has been simply amazing. Why is that? It's because oil is priced in U.S. dollars and the dollar has been strong and so has oil. Oil has just completely rejected the inverse correlation between the U.S. dollar. What does that mean? It means that there's demand for oil and that if the dollar were weak, oil would have been going up even more rapidly. Now, the intellectuals on the Federal Reserve Board say that food and energy prices are are transient and should be omitted from the CPI data, the Consumer Price Index data, which measures inflation. But being a human being with common sense, we all know that when we pull up to the gas station to fill up our car, that the price of gasoline is not, in fact, transient. It is going higher, and the dollars being pumped into our fuel tank are for real. So oil is consolidating with a bias to the upside, we broke out yesterday. We were under pressure, and then we broke out yesterday. Now we're consolidating gains. I think we move higher here on oil. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, up about 48 points this morning. I think we're going to digest some gains. We did see some selling into the close yesterday. We are back above 25,000 on the Dow. Now remember, we have a significant news event out this morning. And that is a concession by the Chinese. Do we get a sell the news event? Be careful. We are long 
of the small caps using the TNA. And here it is, the TNA. I think what we'll do is enter an advanced order on the TNA and sell into this morning's strength. We booked half profits on Friday, and we will put in an advanced order and sell into strength this morning. Because I think what we're going to get is a pullback and a consolidation. I don't think we're going to correct dramatically unless, of course, inflation really rears its ugly head. Remember that we have the FOMC minutes tomorrow. The S&P 500 up this morning, poking its head above resistance. This could be a significant move higher for the S&P 500. The small caps have been outperforming. It looks as though the large caps are playing catch-up. So the S&P up at the margins this morning, but more important is the fact that we are trading above resistance. Let's see if we close there. The NASDAQ, a tight consolidation, unlike the large cap names on the S&P and the Dow Jones, no breakout yet for the NASDAQ. But we are looking good. We're up over a third of a percentage point this morning. I think that we will at least challenge resistance up here. And in all probability, we will break out. And that's it for this morning, folks. If you watch this on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below. Give me a like. If you're watching this on the website, enter your email address, We Hate Spam 2 and we'll send you out a couple of free trade tutorials. If you found us through Stock Twitch, Twitter, Seeking Alpha, give us the follow there. Everybody have a profitable trading day. Members, I will talk to you later on. Be well.